Hey guys, and welcome back to 1700. You just heard from Kirsten Moore, a Melbourne artist who I'm sure we're all going to be hearing a lot more from shortly. She's launching her debut EP, Bear, this Friday. Thank you so much for coming in. Well, thanks for having me. It's awesome Super to be here. <laughs> that track you just played was absolutely stellar. Tell Thank us you. a little bit about Left Out. Left Out at Sea um, is actually going to be recorded later. It's going to be on the full album, so mm -hmm. it's not on the um, original EP. So I just wanted to show you something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So we'll play Origami, I believe, later, which mm -hmm. is one of the singles from the EP. Um, Left Out at Sea, it was recorded in a time I'm on, in my life, which I think most people can relate to, where they kind of feel like they're floating and they don't really know what direction they're moving in. And uh, it was kind of the help that I had in, in a partner at the time who steered me in the right direction, I suppose. Yeah. That's great. Uh, tell us a little bit about your EP, which is coming out Friday, uh, yes. and your big launch. Yeah, it's been massive preparing for the launch uh, this entire year. So we spent the first half of the year recording, and then the second half of the year has just been all preparation, getting ready for the launch of Bear. It comes out on Friday, this Friday, 28th, and I'm so excited and so nervous, <laughs> and it's just like, Blood, sweat, and tears, laying it online. This is me. This is Bear. Like, I hope you love it. <laughs> <laughs> now, the EP Bear, a lot of the songs are quite personal. What are mm. some of the themes that you've tried to kind of work through in your music? Well, the entire EP uh, encompasses stories and experiences, personal experiences of body image and body dysmorphia. And in a way, making this EP was kind of a way for me to completely move past that period in my life, which I had overcome, but it's a nice way for me to kind of seal that box and be like, yep, I've got this tangible, tangible product in the CD, now I can put that in a drawer and be done with it and move forward with the next period of my life. When we were filming Ragdoll, which was the first single from the EP, um, I literally like stripped down to my underwear to film this video, which, you know, who the hell does that for their debut <laughs> single, I don't know. And even I, you know, wasn't really that keen on doing it, but I thought this is what I need to do. And I covered my body in body paint with all these hateful words that the protagonist was obviously thinking to herself in her head. And throughout the course of the film clip, um, rain starts to pour and I'm washing these words away and that's kind of how it felt for me filming it. Like I got to move past that period of my life onto bigger and better things. That's fantastic. I really do feel a sense of catharsis when listening to the EP so that Great. comes across beautifully. <laughs> Thank you. Now tell us a little bit about your songwriting process. I've read somewhere that you write on the train. Yeah, um, well the majority of these songs were written about six years ago and they were on the train quite a lot. Um, that was to and from when I was studying music, to and from uni then. And so yeah, I got a lot of people watching done and it kind of helps me um, see how the people live their lives and try to put myself in their shoes, I suppose. Yeah. That's fantastic. I hope you guys are as excited about Kirsten as we are. We're going to be having a little bit more of a chat with her right after our break. We're going to talk about the gig and heaps more. So make sure you stick with us. This is your Wednesday on 1700. Hey guys, we're back with Kirsten Moore and something that we haven't said yet is that this studio, or not particularly this one, but this setting is very familiar. A familiar. Yeah, a little familiar <laughs> to you. It's really weird being on the other side of the interview panel, I suppose, because yeah, I used to be the one grilling the, the poor <laughs> artists that come in like chattering their teeth and now I'm feeling the heat. <laughs> <laughs> so how long ago did you host 1700? Oh, it's a couple years ago now, maybe 2012, yeah. It was fun though, <laughs> but I wasn't like, yeah, super nervous. What's life like after for us? What are we expecting <laughs> afterwards? Oh, it's amazing. Fame and fortune. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I've already got those two things, so I don't think oh, you'll well be much of a What are you still doing here? <laughs> <laughs> so funny. So you, you've definitely like had a bit of prep for being under the audience's eyes, which might come in handy this Friday. Hopefully, yeah. So this Friday is, is the debut EP launch. Mm -hmm. So we're not only launching the EP that day, um, we're also launching it live at the Wesley Ann in Northgate. So doors open from eight. 
um, everyone should come on down. Yeah, it's going to be an amazing night. We've organised a full band for, for it. Uh, we've got an opening act as well, Tim Cullen. So, yeah, it's the whole shebang. Oh, sounds great. The Wesleyan is an awesome venue as well. So cool, yeah. What should we really expect from the live show? Is it energetic? Does it get a bit dark? What yeah, should we be prepped well, for? Yeah, it's very, it's quite diverse, actually, mm -hmm. the music. So we've got a few really stripped back um, tracks. We've got one with a cello, which is really beautiful, and that's on the EP. It's called She's OK. Um, we've got some really high energy, almost rock tracks and then a few um, more gentler pieces with the piano and the keys that you heard today. So, yeah, a good sort of mix, I suppose. Yeah. That's great. Now, we know where to go, but how do we get tickets? Online? Yeah, you can get them online um, through my website, kirstenmore.com.au, <laughs> or you can um, go, uh, you can get them at the door as well, yes. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, just speaking about the diversity of musical styles that you play, I couldn't help but notice when you were singing, there's a really kind of Kate Bush, Tori Amos vibe. Who are other female musicians that really inspire you? Um, well, thank you for saying that, first of all. <laughs> like, Tori Amos is my idol, and I wrote these songs about six years mm -hmm. ago, um, the ones that appear on the EP anyway. So she, she was a person that I was listening to quite heavily at yeah. the time, so huge influence for me. Um, but uh, other artists, I suppose, Regina Spector, Jewel, anyone who's really got a, a deep storytelling that quality about their music is really, really resonates with me. Um, because originally I just started off sort of writing poetry and then, you know, hearing a little melody in my head and developing that melody and then, you know, when you finally get to sort of work with other musicians and turn it into a piece, it's just, it's magical. We did a stripped back version of Left Out at Sea today, but when we do a full band at the gig and it sounds exactly like it sounds in my head, it's one of the most exciting pieces for me to perform live. That's fantastic. Yeah, so That's it's just so like great. watching that evolution is really, really cool. Absolutely, mm. and it seems like it would be a fantastic track to catch with the full band. So make sure you guys do head on to the town to the Wesleyan this Friday to catch Kirsten, and you can also get a repeat on the net.